thanks for watching and welcome to the LU factorization. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, Chen Lu. No, it's another Lu. It's literally the Lu factorization. How cool is that? And it's actually a very nice way of decomposing a matrix. And I'll show you a very neat application to solving systems of equations. So in fact, let's do that. Let's find the Lu. <laughs> find the LU factorization of the matrix 3, 9, 4, 5. So this is the matrix A, and what do we want to do? We would like to write it as a product of two very special matrices, one which is L, as in lower triangular, so it looks like this, where the terms above the diagonal are zero and upper triangular, where the entries above the diagonal, sorry, where the entries below the diagonal are zero. And of course you can generalize this very easily to uh, three by three, four by four, et cetera, et cetera, matrices. So that's not a problem. Okay, how do you do this? It's very similar to the technique of writing a matrix as a product of elementary matrices. Namely, you have to uh, row reduce this matrix and keep track of the row reduction steps. So, oops, sorry, uh, different video, but let's see. So just row reduce, so let's do that. We have the matrix 3, 9, 4, 5. Then, notice first of all, we can uh, divide this by 3. All right, so the first step would be division by 3 to get 1, 3, 4, 5. And then, so very important by the way, um, when you want to add a certain row to the other one, you have to go down. Like it would not be possible, so it wouldn't give you an LU decomposition if you, for example, add negative one fourth times this row to this row. So very important, if you do an elementary row operation, it would have to go down. And so in particular, what we would like to do now, we would like to add negative 4 times this row to this row. Then we get, how nice, actually an upper triangle of matrix, 1, 3, 0, minus 7. And this will be our U, because it's upper triangle. And of course, for three by three matrices, you just repeat the steps until you basically get the row echelon form, which is sort of an upper triangular matrix. So here we know we're done because it does look upper triangular. And then the question is, how would we get L? And we just get L by writing those two operations as matrices. So what did we have? We started with three, nine, 4, 5, and then the first thing was we divided the first row by 3, and the elementary matrix that says divide the first row by 3, it's the identity matrix, except, you know, the first row becomes, the first entry becomes one third, and you can indeed check that if you do this multiplication, you get this matrix. Then, what was the second thing? We added negative four times the first row to this row, and we get simply one, it's the identity matrix, except because you took minus four, four times the first row, which becomes the first column, to the second row, we have a minus four here. Okay, so minus four, one, and we get our upper triangular matrix. And 
just notice one thing. In all those operations, and that's why I was so careful of doing stuff going down. In all those operations, the matrices, they will always be lower triangular. So in particular, this matrix, the product will be lower triangular and the inverse will be as well. That's why we would get a lower triangular matrix at the end. So what do we get then? We get, you know, 3, 9, 4, 5 equals 2. So we have this matrix times this matrix. If we want to put this junk on the left-hand side, we would have to use the inverse. So this becomes whatever this matrix is, 1, 0, negative 4, 1, 1 third, 0, 1, sorry, 0, 0, 1, inverse of 1, 3, 0, minus 7. And remember, to find the inverse of a product, you reverse the order. So it would be 1 third, 0, 0, 1, inverse, 1, 0, negative 4, 1, inverse, and 1, 3, 0, negative 7. And here's the cool thing. The inverse of an elementary matrix is still an elementary matrix. So the inverse of dividing the first row by 3 is multiply the first row by 3. So we get 3, 0, 0, 1. And the inverse of subtract 4 times the first row to the second row becomes add the fir 4 times the first row to the second row. So 1, 0, 4, 1. So you change this minus 4 into a plus 4. And then we get 1, 3, 0, minus 7. And lastly, all you need to do is just multiply those two matrices together. And basically, because each matrix is lower triangular, the product will still be lower triangular. So we get 3, 0, 4, 1. And you see, this becomes your L, this becomes your U, and then A will be Lu. So, in other words, what do we get? In the end, we just have A, which was uh, 3, 9, 4, 5, so that's A, equals to a lower triangular matrix, so this is L, times an upper triangular matrix, which is U. So A equals to L U. Oh. Actually, funny fa fun fact, in Persian, alu uh, means uh, like peach. So <laughs> yeah, we have a peachy matrix. I think also in Hindi, isn't alu uh, uh, like potato or something? I like alu naan, so <laughs> that's good. Okay, why is this useful? In fact, it's useful because I think that's how computers solve systems of equations. They usually use um, the LU decomposition. Because, so let me give you an application. So why useful? It's super, it, it basically helps you solve systems of equations very easily. Suppose we want to solve AX equals 3 minus 3. Well, A is just Lu. So Lu X, phi of lux, is uh, 3 minus 3. Now, let y be ux. Then all we really need to solve first is ly is 3 minus 3. But l was really easy. So it turns out this system becomes very easy to be solved. So maybe let me write that here. So really what we have to solve is 3, 0, 4, 1, y1, y2 equals 3 and minus 3. So this is y. And let us write this in terms of systems of equations. And you'll see why this is useful. We just get 3y1 
equals 3, and 4y1 plus y2 equals minus 3. Okay? And, okay, good. Uh, then, notice this becomes much easier because first we solve y1 to get 1, and then we solve y2. y2 is simply minus 3 minus 4y1, and that's minus 3 minus 4, and that's minus 7. And so you see, that's why the fact that this was lower triangular is useful. Because the first equation becomes easy to solve, then the second one is easy to solve, then the third one, etc., etc. So you're taking a complicated system and essentially turn it into two systems that are easier to solve. So, in other words, what do we get? Y is now 1 minus 7. The question is now, what is x? But remember what x was? Y was just ux. So you just solve x using this equation. So, in other words, ux equals y. And now, remember that u is upper triangular, so it's also easy to solve. 1, 3, 0, minus 7, say x is x1, x2, equals 1 minus 7. And then, you just write it in terms of systems, so x1 plus uh, 3x2 equals 1, and minus 7x2 is minus 7. And again, you see, we get an easier system, so from this we get x2 equals 1, and from this we get x1 is 1 minus 3x2, and that's 1 minus 3, and that's minus 2. And so our solution in the end is minus 2, 1. And indeed, you can check that if x is this and a is this, then ax is precisely 3 minus 3. Of course, for 2 by 2 systems, it seems kind of crazy, but um, you know, the advantage is really for 3 by 3 systems and higher systems, because you're essentially taking a super complicated system and you turn it into two systems that are much easier to solve. That's why this LU decomposition is very nice. All right, I hope you like this Lou extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.